There's something so satisfying about getting on a plane and just actually enjoying yourself, even in economy. Join me on this trip report today as we check out the airport, the seat, the food, and the service. So let's get into it. Welcome to Nadi. If you'd like to know the exact fare that I paid for this flight or my next five videos in queue, please check out the description below. And if you're new here, hi there and welcome to the channel. My name is Kevin. You found yourself on a channel that thinks that the world needs a bit more honest travel content these days. I make airline trip reports, high-end hotel reviews, and cruise ship tours as well, all without invitation. I always film without the company's knowledge to be sure to get a true experience. And then I give you nothing more than my own personal, honest, unbiased opinion. It is a beautiful day in paradise, and right now we're pulling up to the International Terminal here in Nadi. While Suva, located a four-hour drive to the east, is the capital and largest city in Fiji, Nadi is the primary international hub, with the majority of tourism-related facilities located on this side of the island. There are up to six daily flights between Nadi and Auckland, three on Air New Zealand and three on Fiji Airways. When choosing a flight though, surely Air New Zealand 787-9 service, which happens once a day, would have been my first choice, and it was. Though at the last minute, there was an aircraft swap, which does officially confirm that the third time is not always the charm. This being the third time that I've flown Air New Zealand, booked on a 787 and having a last minute equipment swap, an occurrence that I'm now referring to as being Kiwi. I suppose this sign confirms that common sense isn't always that common. There really weren't any lines at all, but checking in the premium lane with Star Alliance Gold ensured a very quick process. The terminal here is fairly large and kind of modern, at least in the sense that it has everything that you'd need. After passing through the maze of duty-free, my first stop was going to be the lounge. While I did have access to the Air New Zealand lounge here in Nadi, I read that it was really nothing to write home about, so I opted for the Fiji Airways lounge instead, accessed with Priority Pass. Since I mentioned in my Fiji Airways video that it never really occurred to me that some passengers would transit through Fiji to get from North America to Australia or New Zealand, I just wanted to see what the transit facility was like. And frankly, I was mildly shocked. It's a beautiful lounge. Plenty of comfortable seating, working power outlets, and a nice range of fresh food on offer. I'd certainly not have any problem spending a few hours here in between flights. Okay, back to today's main event. Air New Zealand's roots can be traced back to 1939, when Tasman Empire Airways Limited was formed. Initially owned by the New Zealand government, Union Airways of New Zealand, Qantas, and BOAC, Teal focused on trans-Tasman services, meaning between Australia and New Zealand. Air New Zealand proper came to be when the Kiwi government purchased the Australian-held shares of Teal in 1965. Initially, it only served international routes until it was merged with New Zealand National Airways in 1978. Privatized in 1989, it fell back under government control in 2001, following a bit of an embarrassing attempted purchase of ANSET Australia. At the time, Air New Zealand increased its holding in ANSET from 50 to 100%, buying out News Corp. The fatal error, though, was the mismatch of scale. ANSET was simply a much larger operation, and ANSET ended up filing for bankruptcy while the Kiwi government bailed out Air New Zealand. If you support the content that I've been putting out on the channel, or honest travel content in general, please give this video a thumbs up and subscribe. Those are the two easiest ways that you can tell YouTube that this video was worth your time. For anyone that's interested in supporting, my Patreon is also linked in the description below. Thanks for watching today. Here's our aircraft inbound from Auckland now. 
In 2002, they began focusing their domestic operations on more of a low-cost carrier model, and by 2003, they were quickly back to profitability. Currently, they fly to 20 domestic and 30 international destinations across the South Pacific, Australia, Asia, and North America. Here, we can see the primary departure area of the terminal, essentially one large open room with some shops and fast food restaurants around the perimeter. A delay for our flight was announced, which was kind of being expected considering our inbound aircraft landed after we should have been boarding already. I've always been fascinated with Air New Zealand's livery. Their special all-black 787 livery is, by a mile, my favorite aircraft ever. Actually, that's always been the driving reason to try to fly on the 787, to have a chance to see that bird up close and fly on it. Their current livery debuted in 2012 when they abandoned their former teal colors, quite literally, and focused on an all-black and white livery, which even in its basic format is striking. The tail logo is a Maori koru, a stylized representation of a silver fern frond unfolding. They currently have 107 aircraft in operation with a further 17 on order and over the years, they've been quite the innovator in the in-flight experience department. They were the first airline to debut the Sky Couch, at one time, around a decade ago, they had these crazy looking premium economy space seats, which honestly look like the coolest premium economy seats ever, but they didn't really last that long. And while their current business class is very dated, they've recently revealed a totally new business class product coming soon, and the new planes will even feature a handful of fully flat beds in the rear of the plane, which economy passengers can reserve for a few hours at a time. Originally, I was considering a bid for an upgrade on this flight when it was still a 787, so I'd been monitoring the load factor in the days before the flight. 24 business class seats were booked. Problem is, the A321neo that we'd be flying today doesn't have business class at all. I'm not sure how the airline compensated the passengers, but it must have been pretty handsomely because I didn't hear a single peep from any passenger complaining. As for today's flight stats, we did take off an hour late, but enjoyed a smooth three-hour cruise more or less due south to Auckland, where we'd land just over an hour behind schedule. Stepping on board, we were almost overwhelmed with hospitality, in the best of ways. I've said it before, I'll say it again, but my favorite crews, always, without exception, clearly just love their jobs, and today was a perfect example of that. Beyond having their Kiwi charm, they were just very engaging, friendly, and easygoing. Am I the only one that hates this new style of Airbus bins? They make the cabin feel so much smaller when you're boarding, just like a 737. My stylish leather seat for this afternoon was 3 Foxtrot, which had a pair of earbuds waiting for me. When I bought my ticket, I purchased the works package, which included an extra legroom seat and a few other strange bits like onboard entertainment, which otherwise is locked. I'll show you that in a bit. These extra legroom seats feature 33 inches of seat pitch, which is fantastic, but the appearance of all of this legroom does come at a cost of the seat depth, which is actually pretty short. You can see here, even with my small backpack pushed all the way forward, it's still barely halfway under the seat. I really do love the finishes of the seat. They're one of the more smarter looking economy seats on the market today. The only bit that I didn't like is that you recline your seat from this lever in the middle, which I accidentally scratched my leg on a few times getting in and out. The safety video began to roll and we pushed back.
A short but beautifully lush taxi brought us to the runway, lining up to the south. The spool up and take off are coming up now. I'd imagine this is a pretty easy flight for the flight crew, over open water the entire way. Now about the entertainment, so from the food on board to the entertainment and more, everything is a la carte, which means that if you didn't have the works package or purchased it individually beforehand, your monitor would show this. It would give you the option to upgrade to movie time for $10. Soon after, for all of the, the works passengers, it was unlocked and we had a decent selection of movies on offer. Lunch was served. The choices of the day were chicken or chicken. I went with the chicken. Credit where credit is due, and I assure you it did taste a lot better than it looked. And that brownie thing was really good. My only gripe would be I absolutely despise eating off of disposable wood utensils, but I know that's a me thing. After that, a trip to the restroom, which was kept clean throughout and was sporting some butterfly wallpaper inside. After service, the friendly crew continued chatting up passengers and then came around and passed out candies. I'll also mention that while I wasn't in business class, so technically it didn't affect me, I did think it was a very nice touch that the captain came on and apologized for the plane swap and acknowledged the lack of business class on this aircraft. As we began our approach to the northern island of New Zealand, we had some almost impossibly beautiful clouds to lead the way. We would descend over the city and then loop around over the bay before landing in Auckland from the west. Enjoy the landing. A quick taxi past the domestic terminal brought us to our gate, and that is that. After deplaning and passing through what is surely the largest arrivals duty-free I think I've ever seen, this journey came to an end. Overall, it was a fantastic little flight. I'll be honest, winning me over, even after dealing me in aircraft down gauge like that, is not an easy feat. But the service on board, I just can't deny that it's some of the best and most natural that I've ever seen. I look forward to flying Air New Zealand again, and perhaps, perhaps, fourth time is the charm. I do really hope that you enjoyed this video today. If you did, please be sure to click that thumbs up button and subscribe so you don't miss out on any of my other content coming up at a rate of three times a week at the moment. Plenty from New Zealand, Bali, and Taiwan in the weeks ahead. But first, I'll see you next time at the Intercontinental Fiji. Oh, and thanks for watching till the end.